Um, I will start by um, saying a, a, a deeply felt thank you. It's a really great honor to uh, be here, and uh, I so appreciate um, the award and the opportunity to tell my um, somewhat unconventional story. So rather than do text, um, I'm going to boil it down to some pictures. I collect art because I am a lifelong lover of the arts. Uh, I'm able to spend all of my time doing this these days because I've been lucky in business and I've been lucky in life. Uh, I think it's an important activity because centuries from now when we are all gone, what endures is culture. And so our mission as a collection is nothing less ambitious than to rewrite art history. Uh, so this is consistent with the DNA of this region of the country. We really aspire to disrupt old paradigms uh, and literally shift the culture forward. So all of us have been the first, the only, the few. Uh, and um, in this endeavor, um, this is sort of where we, we find ourselves. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I, I got to this place. So I was fortunate enough to have parents who grew up in the Jim Crow South. And when they moved to Chicago, uh, when they were in college, they weren't sure what we should all expect. Um, but they really felt that it was important for their children to have certain literacies, cultural literacy being one of them. So when I was a young child, I would go to the Art Institute of Chicago and stand in front of the picture you see before you. For those of you who know me, it's sort of consistent with my personality. Um, there were French women in good dresses in the parks in Paris. Um, and um, that's a lesson I carried with me in life. But what that art could do for you is it could tran translate you and you know, trans transport you to places that you otherwise weren't able to go at that moment. The bad news in looking at this picture was there was nobody like me reflected there. So the lifelong journey has been to try to alter that reality. Now, as many people who have spoken before me have said today, you have to have mentors, friends, advisors, and cheerleaders. So I'll summon uh, my dear friend Reggie Van Lee's name again. When we were study group mates at Harvard Business School, uh, Reginald actually introduced me to this woman, Laurie Sims. And Laurie, uh, back in the days when dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, was the first African-American curator at the museum, um, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And she said to me, you should learn the stories of African-American artists and collect them as you go forward in, a, uh, in your career on Wall Street. I'm going to roll the clock forward a bit and then go back to sort of the chronology here because a few years ago when we decided we would publish the book that Brookson talked about, uh, I went to Laurie and I said, I want to do this book because I, you know, I'm an MBA. I know I'm not an art historian, but I want to rewrite art history. And she said, girl, I hope you don't get your feelings hurt. Um, and I had to ask myself, was I young enough, smart enough, and resourced enough to engage in this journey? The answer to all three of those questions was no, but I said, I'm going to do it anyway, the story of my life. I have a long history of doing things I'm not supposed to do. And the story of African Americans painting abstract art is exactly the same. These guys were locked out of the art world because the traditional art world wanted to see traditional images of black people being made by black artists. Similarly, the, the African-American community really wanted to, after years of sort of um, denigrating imagery, wanted to see uplifting images of African-Americans. And so this is a group of artists in the 1950s who just simply said, we're going to tell a story that's consistent with ourselves and our interest as creatives. We won't be put in that box. So when I went out to two dozen curators from all the major museums in the country and beyond, um, I got everyone that I asked to participate in this venture said yes. And our notion was that if you got open-minded young scholars 
and expose them to an art history that has yet to be written, they would do what they normally do, which is bring curiosity and excellence and commitment. And that's what this writing has done. But then, this is not the be all and end all. We're really just trying to be a catalyst for future activity. And I could point to a long list of future activity that has come out of some of these scholars uh, who have been engaged in this journey. Last summer, for instance, there were 49 exhibitions around the US alone focused on African American artists. So it is a new day, and there are green shoots. So we've done this book. We run an artist residency at our home in Sonoma dedicated to fostering the careers of young artists. Uh, and we're about to embark on a, a touring exhibition of our collection for almost four years um, in seven venues around the country. So my call to action for all of you is to stand up, make your voices heard as you do in your, in your professional lives. Um, penetrate these, these um, walls of our cultural institutions uh, and do so with enthusiasm around a story that is untold that'll make a difference. Thank you very much.